the best way to pass an Amazon interview is to be really skilled. Like, be good. Yes, then knowing how to answer the questions and being familiar with the leadership principles is the icing on the cake. What, what do you think is the most misunderstood LP by candidates? The one that was classically pointed out as being misunderstood is there's a leadership principle, are right a lot. Leaders are right a lot. Uh, and Amazon did some research long time back now, so maybe it's changed some. But they found in the U.S. that was understood what I'll call correctly as um, leaders are expected to do the work to be right a lot. In some other cultures that are more hierarchical and that have more of a, a an obey your leader vibe, it was taken as like, oh, yes, of course, we're being told to to just the leader is always right. Obey the leader. Obey right. the leader. And so a leadership <laughs> principle is how well do you understand that the leader is right no matter what you think, which is, in mm. fact, the exact opposite of what Amazon was hoping for. They were hoping to put pressure on the leader to do the work to make sure they're right. And what they ended up doing in certain cultures, particularly India in this case, was telling people, yeah, the leader is right, so don't ask questions, which is exactly what they didn't mean. Um, so I think that one is often misunderstood or can be. Um, I think frugality is an easy one that's often misunderstood. Um, uh, because frugality means spend money carefully, but people do what we call frupidity, um, where, where the easiest way to be frugal is, or to look frugal is just say no to all expenses. And that's actually a terrible idea. So I believe most leadership principles have what I call degenerate cases, um, I think think big is really hard to understand because think big doesn't explain too well, right? The full leadership principle is thinking small is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Leaders create and communicate a bold direction that inspires results. They think differently and look around corners for ways to serve customers. I think it's too easy to look at the words and think think big means I need to invent massive lofty thoughts. Like if I haven't invented PayPal or Tesla or or a cancer drug, I'm not thinking big. And mm. that's not really what they mean. Um, I think I th I, I'm surprised you didn't say disagree and commit. Hey, if you're enjoying this conversation about Amazon interviews, be sure to check out Exponent's Amazon interview prep course and engineering manager prep course with mock interviews and breakdowns of every single leadership principle. Hmm. Uh, great prompt. Uh, of course, it gets shortened to disagree and commit. The whole principle says have backbone, disagree and commit. It is, it's, it's the only, it's the only leadership principle that contains three steps in it, um, or two and a half steps. And that's what confuses people is step one is if you disagree, speak up. Step two is even if the other person doesn't immediately accept what you say, be willing to fight for what you believe and back it up. And then step three is when a decision is made, if that decision isn't the decision you believe is right, get behind it and try and make it successful. So I, of course, often look at this in the sense of a American football team and calling the play. Um, I may think that we really, really should throw a pass, but in the huddle, if I'm like, we should pass, we should pass. And, you know, the quarterback says, nope, I'm handing it off. If I'm like, if I go pout and I'm like, well, I'm not blocking, uh -huh. then I'm guaranteeing that the run's going to fail. Right. And I may even feel good about that because I can stand back, let the guy get tackled for a loss and be like, see, I was, I was right. right. <laughs> um, but of course, I wasn't right because uh, if I had done my part, there's a better chance the run might have worked. Now, it could be that it was still a, not as good as a pass. But 
execute, you know, there's this saying execution eats strategy for breakfast. So mm -hmm. I think the commit part is tough. And the hardest part about it, I think, is you're asking people to do something very difficult and stressful, which is commit to taking action on a course of action they don't fully believe in. And that has an ongoing cognitive and psychological cost. Now we're really talking about implementing the leadership principle though. You're right, it's complicated and easily misunderstood. The way I always ask a question about that, which was easily recognizable, is tell me about a time where you had to implement a direction you didn't agree with. And you should be able to talk about that, whether or not, you know, this is the whole point about answer the question, not imagine the leadership principle. Yes, yes. And especially when you get a nice, clear question like that. The, the, the thing that I'm wondering is um, for, for different levels, do you expect different types of stories for who they're disagreeing with? For in sure. terms of someone, of, oh, h how do you think about that ideal spread? Let's say for an, for an ideal senior manager, What's the ideal kind of disagreements you'd like to see in terms of someone above them, someone on another team? Yeah, the, the two most common disagreements, um, the two most common disagreements are with a peer team over priorities, mm -hmm. right? Of, of, you know, something is very urgent for you, it may legitimately not be urgent for them. And so then there's this question of, uh, how do you handle that? Because you need it right now, but actually they may be doing the right thing for them to tell you, yeah, that's not on our priority list. So now what? Um, so I expect you to be able to talk about that uh, and talk about how you resolve that. How do you work around it? How do you communicate it? You know, what are all the things you try to get the work done, but then also how do you deal with it with your management if, if they're not actually going to do the work? Like, how do you escalate? Um, and then, of course, upward. The hardest thing is always to speak truth to power. When do you have to go to someone above you and say, mm, I can't do that? I expect leaders to know how to disagree effectively and respectfully. I don't really care if you win or lose. I care mm -hmm. that you tried and that you um, had your data and you made a good case uh, and you came with options. You know, one of the things about this, there really are fundamental disagreements that there's no third way to like make it all work. But I'd say 80% of the time, things that start as disagreements have solutions with more cleverness. I'm looking mm. for leaders to show me that they at least attempted to be clever. They didn't just fight. What about, um, there's a, there's an obvious tension between have backbone, disagree and commit and earn trust at the senior manager level and above. How do you parse the signal from the noise of that tension? Yeah, it's really interesting. I talked about how leadership principles have degenerate forms or they get yes. they also get weaponized. They get used mm. as a club. And one of the common defenses when you're disagreeing with me is for me to say you're not earning my trust right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which is a bullshit thing. Right. And, and if someone said that to me, I'd say, hmm. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but I, I want to address that head on. Um, I'm disagreeing with you in a constructive way, trying to get to a mutually beneficial solution. I'm in conversation with you about a difficulty we both have, trying to find a way to make it win-win. And if it can't be to make it the best outcome for the company, that should be actually earning your trust that I'm dealing in good faith. The earn trust, I would just lecture the person, even if they were above me, and say, earn trust doesn't mean do what you want. It means deal with you openly and honestly from a place of mutual mutual best interest. And I am doing that. So if that doesn't work for you, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to change. Amazon, by the way, lots of the leadership principles are set up to be in conflict with each other. That's not the only one. There's an acknowledgement. Um, hmm. Uh, for example, think big and dive deep can seem contradictory. Yeah, totally. Uh, be right a lot and bias for action, for sure. How I'm supposed right. to move really fast but never screw up. How do I do that? And and on and on. Um, 
you know, insist on the highest standards. You know, there's just a lot of things I'm supposed to invent. Well, if I'm supposed to be right all the time, invention has risk, right? Uh, invention is about making mistakes and lots of them. In answering your questions, I have like a meta point I want to make, mm -hmm. which is the best way to pass an Amazon interview is to be really skilled, like be good. Yes, then knowing how to answer the questions and being familiar with the leadership principles is the icing on the cake. But if you're thinking, oh, I need to like find a way to snow my way into this company through interview prep, you kind of have the, the wrong, wrong idea. idea. Right. right. Second, second thing is, um, even within that, go to the interview with a viewpoint of, I am confident in who I am and I'm going to share what I've done and let the interviewer sort of sort out, uh, these principles again, don't get too much into managing the process. Instead, if anything, it is important to interview well, but that's more about building rapport. Um, I don't know if this would be helpful to you, but it might be. My interview with Amazon, For I came in on a flight, some things happened, and I ended up getting into my hotel room about 2 a.m. Mm. Uh, and needing to like get up to be in an 8 a.m. interview and with time to get dressed and whatever. And so yeah. I gave up on my interview. In one sense, I gave up on my interview before going to bed. I'm like, well, this is F. Dover, <laughs> but I didn't get depressed about it. I was like, well, I'm going to go through the motions. I'm here. I'm going to do my best, but I'm going to be, mm. I don't expect an offer. I've done half an all nighter. It is what it is. Turns out that was a great strategy because I went through the day stress-free the whole day. Yes. I was like, eh, I'm not getting this job. So whatever. <laughs> well, then I wasn't stressed about anything. And I just rolled with it. And I actually, I happen to know because someone told me I crushed the interview. You know, I had what's called an all inclined loop. Everyone was inclined. And at the end of the loop, not knowing this was happening, they actually brought in my SVP to sell me. And so I'm like at the end of this long interview day being really tired. And it took me a bit to catch John. He's like, well, what questions do you have? I'm like, I don't have any questions. What do you need to know about me? <laughs> and it took me a little bit to catch on that they'd switch gears to selling and I wasn't doing a very good job engaging with the sell process. So I switched gears and it was all fine. The point is though, I interviewed with some people that are, you know, semi-legendary in the history of Amazon now, well-known characters. And I did it on four or so hours of sleep and I succeeded with no knowledge of L I'd never heard of an LP, you know, so don't feel like that's the key. The key is answer the question and be engaged and forward. Obviously the leadership principles have changed your life and career. Uh, give us a, a note to end on for, or why that's true. I think the leadership principles challenged me to be broad. Is is they challenged me to do things I didn't think were my job. And so probably the hardest leadership principle for me, I saw myself when I came to Amazon as a senior manager, I had in mind my job is to build what I'm told. I'm assigned to build something, I build it. If I build it well, my job is done. Amazon said, mm, not so not so fast. Um, if you build it, nobody wants it and the customers don't like it. Even though you were told to build it, you as a leader have still failed. You need to be engaged enough. You built a working thing, but you built a working useless thing. And yes, that useless thing is what somebody else asked you for. That's still, that's not enough. That doesn't count as success. That taught me to start thinking more broadly than just, I am an engineer. This is what I do. It taught me to actually take ownership for the business success. And for me, that changed my life because I, I stopped being an engineering leader and I started being a business leader. And that totally changed my life. Um, and that really was driven by, oh crap, they want me to actually think about that. Like they're, they're saying it's part of my job, not just to build, but to build something useful. Amazing. Thank you, Ethan. 
No problem. My, my pleasure, Kevin. Thank you for the chance to share.